My name is Tura Koko, and I'm here to present about Myanmar business environment. And I can't think of anything more boring to talk about at a TEDx event after lunch. But I'm afraid you have no choice because I can't sing or draw. I can't do poetry. I'm useless on Facebook and online. I can barely say no to my mother, let alone my minister. <laughs> TEDx changed my photo profile to make me more interesting. So much for democracy and transparency. <laughs> but I left the country when I was six years old, grew up in London, ended up in investment banking, and five years ago, I came back to explore the Myanmar business potential. And so what have I learned and discovered in my time here? <laughs> Over the past two years, the fund I work with has invested over $200 million in Myanmar companies. And so Myanmar business is very much alive and well. The entrepreneur is thriving. And I'm just going to take you through no more than five takeaways um, that I have over the past few years. Number one, I think you've heard Rene talk about it, but it's fast changing in a number of ways. And we're all here because of that. Uh, the liberalization that has taken place over the past years has brought investment, not enough, but it's a good start, and that has brought new ideas and new concepts. And technology is, of course, a key factor. And the leapfrog from 10% penetration to 50% penetration has brought with us better connectivity to people, to news, to information, new ideas and concept, and fashions and trends and aspirations. Technology has meant that we've all had to adapt. And many of us try to adapt and keep up, but try and keep some of our culture and tradition in place as well. <laughs> Technology has also leapfrogged in many ways. But as Rene has talked about it, for the first time, uh, this population is going both mobile and online at the same time. And that's changing the way we live, the way we do business, the way we absorb information and entertainment is all on the phone now, the way we buy, the way we sell, the way we trade. It's all changing. And so our business models, our retail business models, our banking models are all having to change. So a need to adapt. My second takeaway also requires us to adapt and be on our toes, and that because business here is inextricably linked to politics. It's not something we're particularly proud of, but that's the reality. Business and politics goes hand in hand. Now, it's not just us, of course. Business and politics go hand in hand elsewhere as well. And <laughs> if you thought we had difficulties choosing a president, spare a thought for those less fortunate. But elsewhere, the law is there in the background. It's robust, it's reliable, it's transparent, and even when it changes, you often get time to adapt to it. Here in Myanmar, laws often change quickly. You have to implement immediately. It's unclear. The tax laws may tell us to pay X, but we may end up being told to pay Y. And so, Business and politics go hand in hand. It will forever do so. Um, but put another way, for the micro in our country, the micro business, the business, the entrepreneur, the staff, the employee, for the micro to do well, it's got to go hand in hand with the macro. For the micro to succeed, the macro must also succeed, whether that's infrastructure, that's power, that's communications, banking. And I think it's incumbent on all of us to do our bit to move the macro along. And that may be uh, better laws in parliament, better advice, that may be extra tuition for our kids, that may be eating healthier. Um, but we all have to do our bit to move the macro along for the micro to succeed. That brings me on to my third point. 
Not surprisingly, the macro is not always there for us, and it presents challenges, obstacles, and hurdles. And if the average Myanmar entrepreneur resigns him or herself to problems, they will never move on to succeed. And so I think the Myanmar entrepreneur has been extremely resourceful over decades of difficult uh, obstacles, whether it's lack of banking, trade finance, and I've said those, uh, all the things that we've lacked before. But they are all resourceful, and all, they are all the better for it, and uh, they stack up to any other entrepreneur we've seen in other markets and regions. And I just want to give some example of how the Myanmar entrepreneur is solutions-oriented. I'm not necessarily advocating some of these methods, but they have at least moved the country on. You need to winch heavy equipment up, no problem. You just take the tire off and drive your car, and there you have it. And this is my, the next one is my favorite. We've suffered <laughs> severe floods, but that hasn't stopped these kids moving on with their lives, moving on with their interests, and accessing the net. It's extraordinary resourcefulness. But this brings me on to my fourth point. Occasionally, no matter how hard you try, you are inevitably up for failure. And maybe your targets are going to be missed, maybe your supplies are going to get through customs on time. And at some point, you're going to have disappointing and bad news to deliver. And the Myanmar entrepreneur and the Myanmar person in general do not do that so well. I think you've heard Helen and others talk about the culture of fear we've had in school with parents where you don't want to deliver news, bad news or difficult news. Well, here's another uniquely Myanmar concept that holds us back from saying what we want. Anade. It's a uniquely Myanmar concept. It's ingrained in our psyche, and I think many of our guests here and people who've moved here are appreciating this now. But it's a difficult concept to translate, but it's essentially um, not wanting to make your audience, whether it's your customer, your boss, your teacher, your guest, feel awkward or put out. So you may want to say no, but that'll be terribly rude and bad. You may mean yes, but that may mean overconfidence, arrogant, so that's not appropriate. So what do you say? You say, yeah, <laughs> bade. It's okay. <laughs> What's okay? Nothing's okay, but yeah, bade. <laughs> you may have asked your staff to do a PowerPoint presentation tomorrow morning. It isn't done because she doesn't know how to use PowerPoint. Yabade. <laughs> no problem, it's okay. I went up to Nebudor, many of you have been. This is a city full of roundabouts. And I was particularly tight for timing, so I asked a driver and I made sure we had uh, to go to a particular ministry several times that day, and I said, do you know your way around Nebudor? Have you been to Nebudor many times? Ah, yabade, siya. Seima bune, keisamishiu, yabade. And so we get lost. Uh, <laughs> three times from the same ministry. <laughs> and, um, and the issue here is that, uh, so I went to him and I took him to talk and I said, I thought you said you have been to Nebido many times. I've been here many times, but each time I get lost. It's <laughs> okay. And it's a wonderful trait, um, but it does create inefficiencies, miscommunications, additional costs, and frustrations. And so be aware of that. <laughs> this brings me on to my last takeaway. And moving on from the concept of anade, anade at its heart is about thinking about the other person, the individual. It's not just about the difficult message that you have to deliver, but it's about what that might make that person feel, how that will put that person in a difficult spot. It's about thinking about each other. It's about being considerate for all the flaws that Anade has at its heart. It's about that. 
And my final takeaway is that Myanmar business is about the people. It's a bit of a cliche, but it really is about the people. Uh, it could be celebrating your staff's wedding. It could be helping her through an accident or a difficult period. It could be about the team. It could be about the community at large within which your business and your employees reside in, live and work. And almost every day, the average Myanmar business has had to think beyond just commercial terms and has had to think about their people. And here are some simple examples um, that we've seen everywhere. The flood relief. I think everybody simply just got up, chipped in, and did whatever they could to uh, get people back on their feet. The thing about this photo is I don't quite understand why those with life jackets are on the boat, but those without life jackets are in the water. But you know, yabade. Yeah, <laughs> We're now facing uh, El Nino droughts, and uh, a local business has uh, chipped in to buy this water tanker to deliver water to a community and villages that are unrelated to them. But it's an important part of business here. And this is a foundation, there are many out there, but I wanted to just flag as an example. This is a lady from our hometown. She's the one in the middle and the lower picture. She's a business lady, and she and her other business friends on her birthday offered breakfast for every single patient in Rangoon General Hospital and their family. And on her birthday, she did that. They then did it the next day, and they have done this every morning for the past 548 days now. In addition to that, they now have a fleet of ambulances, emergency healthcare. We have some very good hospitals here, but the emergency healthcare to get us there. She's got a full team of volunteers trained some abroad um, to deliver this. And everything is done on voluntary basis, donations, from people, community, and from businesses. So in conclusion, I want to summarize the four or five items that I've presented. Before I do, let me just share with you a few of the people who taught me these lessons. It's Makeme U, who's a widower with three kids, and the microfinance platform that we lent some money to, 800,000 jets or so over the past six months, allowed her to buy a fridge that then allowed her to sell ice cream and cold water for the school kids and the people around her town. Her income has gone up, uh, doubled in the past uh, six months or so. I've taught and I've been uh, learning from people like Map Wimpu, who's managed to take a micro loan, bought raw materials that has allowed her to take on larger orders with longer lead time. I've learned from this kid, Pye Zung Mao, who works in one of my uh, offices. I found him at a monastery. He gets up 6 a.m. every morning, travels two and a half hours by bus to get, in my, to get to our offices. He's never once late. He's never touched a computer, and now he's part of the inventory team with price updates and so on. And I've learned from kids like Aung San Tu, who's not letting the macro hold him back, who's not letting the conditions hold him back. All he wants is an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to compete for a job. So I've learned from these people, and uh, they've inspired me, and they've given us the confidence that Myanmar business here has a very bright future indeed uh, going forward. And so I've also learned from this gentleman <laughs> about the importance of the environment and a sense of humor. So to conclude, the Myanmar business and the entrepreneur has had to adapt and change uh, almost on a constant basis. They've had to be on their toes for regulations and environmental changes. They've had to be more resourceful than one would ordinarily have to be. They've had to take account of local nuances. Don't forget we've got ethnic diversity and regionalities and each of their own customs, and you've got to learn to read between the lines and the gestures. And they've had to support each other. And I think that's my final conclusion, that Myanmar business and the entrepreneur does well because fundamentally 
we've always had to support each other. We've always had to trust each other because we couldn't always rely on the macro. And so it's a bit of a cliche, but I genuinely believe, believe it and mean it when I say Myanmar business is really about its people. And in a world of commercialism and bottom line targets, I think the rest of the world also learn a bit about thinking beyond the commercial paradigm, beyond the targets, and about the people and the environment. And I want to conclude there. I thank you. I hope you found my presentation helpful or interesting, but if you didn't, yeah, bade. <laughs>